This is Eddie Guevara again with the second unboxing. Number two. I actually have been asked by a few people if I can start unboxing my collection. You know, show whatever I can each week a little. Today's a whole. <laughs> I um, First thing I'm going to say about this, what I have today is, I, I, well, what I decided to do is I'm going to take a box and I'm going to see whatever's in the box and I'm going to bring it to here. And each week I'm going to show the items. Now, this one box that I have, I'll explain why some of the items are not in the best condition. I had a fire in 1995 and the items I have here, 90% of these items are from 1985. Now, remember, the fire was 1995, 10 years later. Not only did they survive the fire, but they've been in my possessions since 1985 when I had my magic shop. Um, I'm sorry, 1989. I had the magic shop between 87 and 89. But I started the mail order stuff in 1985. But some of the products were actually bought before I had the magic shop. So I'm going to start with the pro I'm just going to show. So I'm going to go quickly through it because I don't want this video to be, you know, 100 hours. But here, here's basically what we have. The first thing. Now, remember, these items were sold in comic books. They were sold by the Johnson Smith catalog. Most of them were sold through Johnson Smith. But we're going to start. The first one is. The famous exploding golf ball. See the packaging? Here is the exploding golf ball. A lot of people used to buy that, believe it or not. Now, the second item, these are cassette tapes that were her, you know, from her uh, Halloween cassette tapes. I have, oh gosh, over 72 different ones. I just want to show the different ones that I have here. Okay. And I'm going fast because there's a lot. Here is a whoopee cushion, original whoopee cushion. I know that some places still have the same packaging and everything, but this, this is the original whoopee cushion. To show people that I do have lots of everything. Now, this one's here. This, this is funny because this is one item that every time it goes on eBay, they sell for like $20. I make a fortune. This is... Um, See the little skeleton hands? <coughs> little skeleton hands. This bag holds 144 of them. I have about 22 of these bags. Okay? This is each each of this piece on eBay does about $20. Okay, skeleton hand. Again, I'm going fast because there is a lot to show. These are bags of the skeleton hands, if you could see here, but this don't have the skull. This is just the two little hands. See, I, I think this, you see how it is? I think one of my friends, I don't know if it was Joe Pavel, Joe Pav or um, Todd, or somebody else asked me if if, if, if I had seen it. I go, yeah, well, I have right here to give an example. And I just grabbed a few. Here's two bags, each with 144 pieces. Over here is another famous item, which, oh gosh, I haven't opened this bag in... I don't know, 30 years, but here's what it is. I, I'm not going to open it because I think some of them are actually falling around. But who doesn't remember the exploding cigarettes? This here is, it's a gross. It, it, you can't see it, but it, it, it's in here. I have one, two, a couple of cards, and each card holds about 20, 30 of them. But this is the exploding cigarettes. I'm going to keep it here because I don't want to make a mess tonight because I do have a lot. Here's another whoopee cushion. Over here, a very famous thing sold in Johnson Smith. It's called the suction cup. What it does is you put a saucer in the, in the coffee and it squeezes and it holds it together. When the person lifts up the cup, the coffee, I mean the saucer comes with the cup. Over here we have one of the original SS Adams. You see how some of these things are not in the greatest condition. Good condition, just they're crooked and stuff, man. These are the original snake eggs from the original SS Adams. Here I have the fart whistle. There's another famous Johnson Smith item. This all basically Johnson Smith items. Here we have the squirt cigarette pack. Okay. 
Notice how it is, a squirting cigarette pack. Here we have the fake parking tickets. Okay, this is this was a funny object. I mean, I've, I sold a lot of them. Now, this are original, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going fast because there's quite a few I have to show. Here we have the Bloody Soap by Franco American Novelty Company. They were the original producers of the Bloody Soap. There's one version of the Bloody Soap. Now, here we have the exhaust car whistle. You see how some of them are kind of rough shape, <laughs> crooked and stuff. I mean, the condition is all right, but it's here's the exhaust car whistle. This is a this is a good prank. I think it's one of the best I ever played. Um, who doesn't remember the original fart spray? If you notice, you see the design on it. Uh, Franco American Novelty too. This is the 1980s as well. Over here I have. Now this this is this is interesting. This is the sour mouth gum. I used to sell this in my store like crazy. I had blue mouth gum, red mouth, hot pepper. Hot pepper is the one they sold in through the mail a lot more. Here is another version of the, you know, older version of the uh, exhaust car whistle. This this item here, I, I don't know, I, I didn't even remember this item, but this item here is kind of like a door thing you put, but it, it has an inflatable Frankenstein that comes on it's six feet tall. This is a, a real nice item. I didn't even know I had the, this item here, but apparently I, ha I have like four or five. Of them. <laughs> I just grabbed two by accident here, but I just wanted to show that. Uh, here is the energy ball. This is one of those balls that was sold in comic books in Johnson Smith. You put it in the palm of your hand and it makes some type of uh, futuristic like wee, wee, wee sound. It's, it's very interesting. Over here I have, I don't know, some old inflatable... 60 inch skeleton ah, that's not that great okay here is the original invisible ink squirting you squirted somebody's shirt this really was a this was a great item great item now who doesn't remember i have oh my god i got over 100 of these the original snake and nut can it's another thing when you open it up how came the snake now this are original cans still made of metal um, they've kind of disappeared today. They don't really have them that much anymore. Few people have. Okay, look, this one here. Oh my God, I gotta say a story. This this was the best. This fish tasting candy. I gave it to my wife one time in the mall when she was pregnant with my third kid, and it was it was a great joke, but it was not a good joke because she was running to the bathroom to throw up after I gave it to her, and she was pregnant. So I don't think you know it was. <laughs> It was kind of a joke that I regret doing it, but it was, you know, it had a funny, a funny thing to it. Now over here is garlic mouth gum. Now this, obviously, you can't, they're not consumable anymore. This is from the 80s, so they're still in the original. Now this one here, you guys got to remember this. This was sugar packs sold in Johnson Smith all the time. You couldn't tear them. They're like plastic or something. I mean, they're like real sugar packs, but you can't rip them apart. This is hilarious. I love the artwork on that. See the guy trying to... Now, I'm trying to go through this as fast as possible. Here are one of the... Now, this one, they made several. This are the snake eggs. When you open it up, it has a... You can tell how old this thing is. It's falling apart. But um, this, this, one, the, the, this one actually... I have, you know, Brandon... This one actually broke. It, it was, I, I think, a snake. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised this even broke to me, honestly. That's this is what it was. It has this thing here, and then you wind it up, and then when you put it in there, it would make the sound like brrr, and it scared the heck out of people. I have quite a few dozen of these. This is probably one that might have gotten wet, but it, it's a very older version, you know. I, I kept it because of the the art. Um now here is another black soap. This one, this one's kind of like it's an SS Adams. I didn't think that this was a great product because it was black. Like, come on, people are going to know a black soap, obviously. It doesn't make sense. The other one, at least you could turn it upside down, and it had a little dye, and it would... So it said you would wash them dirty. This was a really good novelty. I sold quite a few of those. Um, now, here is the fortune-telling fish. I laughed because I saw somebody on eBay selling one of these the other day for like 40 bucks, and I'm like, are you kidding me, man? See, it's a fortune-telling fish. You put it like in the palm of your hand. And it curls. I have three bags, and each of these bags, if if you could tell here, see, um, 
there's quite a few. That's I think like um like 40, 50, 50 of them. I have oh gosh. I, I used to sell that a lot for like a dollar each, and I have quite a few of those. Um here we have another thing, the amazing uh, squirting calculator. I don't know if I showed one before, but I hope I did it. This is a uh, another Johnson Smith. You can see that towards the, the end of the Johnson Smith catalog from the 70s. Um, here is one of the first uh, electronic whoopee cushions. Now, this is cool because the whoopee cushion, you know, when this was made electronic, this one's, this is great. The other one is just, you know, it's just, a, it's okay. For a little kid, not for an adult. You know, it's it's hard to, to play it. Now, early um, Honor House ads and stuff would uh, would show this a lot, which was the the fake arm cast, and it, you know they would sell it a lot, and, and the kid would be like that. Well, this is one of the the original sealed. Uh, the paper fell off, but it's there. But this is is brand new. See, you would put it on, and you pretend you have a broken arm. It, it's 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 a good item. I mean. I guess how you could play, you know. Oh, and here's one of the, uh, I have quite a few of these. Uh, <laughs> this is the glow-in-the-dark bats. I have, uh, this was my favorite, show, you know, because it looks kind of like the one, the remote control bat sold in comic books. When I used to sell it back in the day, I used to use this one uh, because I didn't want to use, I do have over 150, 200 of those, but once you sell them, you can't get them anymore. They're not, they're not really made anymore, so... I used to improvise with that. So I have quite a few hundred of those. Uh, here is a label. This is also sold through the Johnson Smith Company. The label is, uh, say, 100% horseshit. Like you put it in back of your shirt or something. Eh. That's, you know, it is what it is. Now this is the living skull. It does the same thing as the orb. You touch the bottom and it will go, wee, you know, and play a, I have, you know, I only took a couple just to show each product. And as we get closer to the end, I'll show them more. Okay, here again is the squirting pack. This is the one I showed you. This is just another one. I, I must have done some duplicates here. Um, here is another. This one's one sometimes on eBay. I've seen this one sell for as much as like 30 bucks. And I'm like, really? But this is a uh, scary cassette. Another nice one there, you know. Um, I have here... Now, again, I, I just put, here's an, another garlic gum, and this is the same thing. So I'm going to go through those fast uh, for the collar thing. I know. Okay, here, Johnson Smith and Honor House, when they sold the condensed smoke, this is what it was. See, this is original condensed smoke. You put it in an ashtray, you light it, and it fills the whole room with smoke. I have them in this bag because, you know, they're so old that they, uh, so you condense smoke. You know, I don't want it to. And this, oh my gosh, this was an awesome item. This is the best looking mouse I ever sold. The dust is, uh, see? This one was sold in Johnson Smith. I have quite a few of them, but it's, it looks like a real mouse and it's soft, man. That's the best. In here, which I just noticed, I don't even know where the heck I got this, um, uh, um, wow. You can show the age on this sucker because of the the fact that it's, I don't know if that's mold or what the hell it is, but a Garfield watch. Look at that. I'm going to actually clean that up. Ooh, it's actually not mold. You know what it's from? It's from this uh, powder. Let me just put the powder there, whatever it is, because I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to toss this bag out because... It needs to be replaced with a better, cleaner bag. I don't know what the heck that was. But anyway, condensed smoke. You know the, the Honor House ad that says, you know, ignite one and fills the whole room with smoke. And they, they have like a, an atomic explosion. That's a nice item. I really like that item a lot. It was one of my favorite. Um, here is another Johnson Smith. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen this in the Johnson Smith catalog. In fact, you can tell by the artwork. Uh, the floor nickel. Eh, I don't know if people are going to actually bend down like that. But, I mean, back when they made that in the 70s, why not, you know? 
Now, here is another black soap. You see what I said about the condition of some products? Now, this is been like that, obviously, because, you know, being one on top of the other years. We're talking 1984, you know, so that's a long time ago, man. And, I, you know, when I say 84, is because I started buying products between 84 and 85. So a lot of them I just bought because I liked it. You know, I, I didn't buy here. I'm kind of glad I bought these like in 1985, 86, give or take. These are the famous knife through head. You know, this actually, you put it on your head and it looks like a knife went through. It's very realistic. I, I got to admit, this is a super nice item. But what I wanted to show is this same item. There's a version of it that sells for over, over 100 bucks, which is this one. You see how this... Um, has a like a really different uh, header and see what I'm saying? This one looks like really it has like a haunted house in the back or a Frankenstein. You see it? This is really nice. I have I don't know about seven or eight of those with this header, and the rest are this are more like the '80s one. This is the more standard version. Um, this well, <laughs> they fell somewhere inside the drawer there, so. But the, look at the artwork, how nice, man. That, that's that's classic artwork, you know. You know, it made me laugh because I a, a lot of people pay a hundred, two hundred dollars, which is incredible. Imagineering vampire blood. I bought two dozen of them in 1980 some, and uh, and they're all in mint condition in the original pack. I I've been looking for them. I don't know exactly where they are, but I have at least 24 of those vampire blood because I, I used to love the fact that said vampire blood on it. Um, now this is also a Johnson Smith product. This product here is the one that you would be able to draw remember it says learn to draw there were two versions of this one kind of looked like a little uh like a lamp a night lamp that you turn on well this one is another one that was sold if you look at comic books this you'll see it in in more 1981 82 this this came out um, a lot of products right <laughs> now as we're getting closer i'm gonna bring quite a few more but I'm going to get to the, the more older versions. Okay, here we have... Oh, gosh. Another. See, SS Adams had the different colors. And stuff. Another black soap. We have here another pack of No Tear Sugar. This is just accidentally I grabbed doubles. Because I'm trying to do the, the video. You know? uh, floor Nickel again. Oh, what about this one? The Squirt Ring. Kind of crappy looking, right? But anyway... The suction cup again. Here, here's the black soap I was talking about. See, this one, this usually covers this, so you don't, you don't see. It, but this must have slipped in the package somehow, the paper. But this is the black soap. This one, at least, when you put it upside down, you know, the person would actually fall for it, and you would wash them dirty, which is the the ad said, and that was so fun. Before the joy buzzer or after the joy buzzer, and now this one here is a, it's in a little bit rough shape, the uh, the packaging, but here. What this did is you wound it up, and when you shook somebody's hand, sparkles would come out. You see the, the way it is? Uh, this one's a really rare. This this has got to be, I have about four or five of them. I used to sell them in the store, but they weren't really a popular seller. And, of course, look, look at this package. This is in really rough shape. Rough shape meaning that it's all crooked, but it's, it's good. It's the SS Adams Relight Candles. I don't care that this one's like that because I have... Couple when I see all the items I'm showing here, I bought several dozen of. So I still have everything from the eighties, all that stuff, and yet people go on eBay and sell each one for twenty, thirty dollars. And are you kidding me? Uh sometimes that's why when people call me up and go, oh, Do you have I usually give it away because I mean I have hundreds, what do I care? The idea, like I've told people, come to house of the unusual dot com. Become a member of the forum. I'm trying to grow an audience of people like-minded, talking with each other. People that can befriend each other in a friendly Christian environment. A way that, let's. how can I best say it? That we can relate with our youth and who we are. It's not about, oh, let's make money. Let's... If you do that, that's not what's fun. See, I, I'm doing this because I love it. That's why I have amassed such a huge collection of I don't know what you want to call it, garbage. <laughs> but I did this because of the love I have for my generation of growing up. And, you know, and, and the best part about it was, like I said earlier in other shows, is the fact that 
you always waited in anticipation as to what you were going to get. So if you look at this thing, like the most popular is the hot pepper gum. I'm going to show the originals that they would send you in the mail because <laughs> I have quite a few. I'm sure you don't want to eat them. They're from 1980 something, but here you go. Look how funny that is. They put the guy like, you know, if, when you're buying it and you look at the cartoon, the cartoon sells the product. It looks like you're going to have horrible garlic breath and the people running for cover. And that's what sold me. That's that was, that's what made the 70s such a beautiful time. Because the imagination was just cool, man. I mean, I can't say much on it. Now, here, here we got, um, again, I'm bringing out the, the item. <laughs> Another one of those suction cup things. Oh, my God. Oh. Here you go. Here's one in uh, almost perfect condition. The sparkling. I, I told you I have quite a few of those. Um, now I'm getting to the the older stuff. Now this one here, this was called the squirt seat. This is also a Johnson Smith product. Uh, see if you can see the squirt seat. You, it's kind of like a bulb you put underneath the toilet, and it kind of works like the squirt ring when somebody sits. It squirts. This one is good. Provided they don't look in the toilet because they could see the thing coming out. So it's it's not as great of a joke as you. I, I'm going to show you a really good joke. And then anyway, this this is another. I, this is a very popular Johnson Smith item, which is the plate lifter. It's kind of you put a bulb underneath the, a plate, and somebody's going to eat, and you squeeze the bulb from the other side of the table, and the plate lifts up. It's it, honestly, it's okay. I I've never played it. I don't know how it you know people will react to it. I just sold it. Um, uh, uh, here, here here's. Here's a, almost a perfect cut. Here's the bloody soap. <laughs> it did the opposite. This one made you blood. I mean, bloody red instead of, of dirty, you know? This is the bloody soap. Calf, if you're listening to this video, I'm doing this because you asked me to bring out Johnson Smith stuff. Let me tell you, you have no idea how much more I have. Not today, but over the next couple of weeks. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing a video every Thursday, which usually goes up on Friday, whatever. Today is actually Friday, so... I'm a day late on this one, but um, I'm getting to the, uh, okay, here you go. Here's another another plate lifter. I, again, I, I was doing so I'm getting, here is, uh, this one's called um, Devil Soap. <laughs> this one's a little worn out, but I have a couple of boxes, so there's some. This is the Red Soap. Uh, I, it's, it's kind of stupid too, because this whole soap is red. So come on, obviously. But it's the boxing. I just want to show. This is a really old version of it. Uh, when I had my magic shop, I got these, I think, from a company called Morris Costumes. And I have, like, I don't know, a dozen of those. I, I still have, like, four or five of those little boxes. Now, this one here. Oh, gosh. I have, <laughs> I have over 100 of these. The fame, And this is funny. They sell them again. And I have older boxes of this as well. For a couple of, like, 40, 50, 100 bucks. And I'm like, are you kidding me, man? People, you know what? We all grew up in this era, and not all, but I'm saying the people that did grow up in this area, a lot of us don't have the money, man, to buy things at freaking crazy prices, you know? I wish people would understand that. When you're going to sell something, if you know that there's more of it around, I understand, look, you have a, a rare item, no one's got it, and you put an astronomical price. Okay, fine, but some people actually, you know, I have, like I said, I have over 100 of these. I try not to sell them because a lot of people go out there and pay for it. And I feel sorry for them, you know. But if I were to put, I could put every week at least five or six of them a week. Just like the secret book safe that sells for like a hundred bucks every time you put one on. I have over 40. Original. Um, and I've given a lot away. Here. Now, who, who doesn't remember Mystic Smoke? This was produced originally by S.S. Adams. If you look at the, the tube, it says S.S. Adams, but... It's packaged for store sale. The the mail order version of it would not have this, but, but you see how cool it is. Look at that! Look at the artwork on that. This is fantastic. Smoke. This was say uh, was called smoke from fingertips, and you. I think the American Circle was very good at advertising for that, and they show the guy going like this, whatever. Which is, I got a tour of the SS Adams company way back by Chris Adams, the original owner, before Dave. However, sad I met him, he purchased half the company later on, and we he's partners with me in uh, Acme House Novelties, which I tell a lot of people, 
If you're looking, you better get the Frankenstein because we only pr printed 200 and I'm not sure I'm going to make that again. That's the uh, one for like $89. We have a good deal on that, by the way. Um, and um, you can get that directly. If there's there's a link, if you go to the link of my website, houseoftheunusual.com, or you can go on eBay and search 7 Foot Frankenstein. I think it's Presco is the company that Dave uses for that. But if you go to the link and where I'm talking and showing a picture so you can see what it looks like, you click that link, it's going to take you directly. And David has him in Connecticut, so he can ship them out, you know. Um, but please, don't don't miss that opportunity if you can. Here is huh, the red mouth gum. See? Another version. Now, a lot of people say, well, oh, oh, this one. What about this one? The fake mustache. See, the fake mustache. Then we have another floor nickel. Oh, when I first started selling the spy camera, since obviously the original little spy camera was no longer available, I used to improvise. This was a 110 mini camera for 100. And, you, know, you remember the 110 used to be the 126, 110, you know, cameras we had uh, back when we still use film. <laughs> I have, I don't know, about a dozen of these left, but this is an original spy camera I used to sell. Um, now, as I said, I'm getting to the good stuff. And here is, you see here, this is another <laughs> early version of, the, now, like I said, the exhaust car whistle is great because when you put this in somebody's exhaust pipe, when they start the car, it starts going like, and the first thing the person does is open up the engine and see what's wrong with it. This is funny, man. But you got to be careful you to do it too because <laughs> they can turn around and hit you. It's not, I want to show you guys when I'm talking about age and time. Here's another floor nickel, but you see this one here in particular didn't survive as well as the other. Look at the rust. You see the rust in that thing? When I'm telling you, my novelties go way back. Nothing you're seeing here is new store stock. This soap here didn't have it too good either. See? But the, you know, it's still in its original packaging and somebody wanted it eddie you have one yes i got one i'll mail you one don't worry about it um now now we'll get into but do you guys remember this this item it's called the sap trap what this was was a little piece of string with a little firecracker in the middle you tie it to one handle like a doorknob and you tie it to the door post and then when they open the doors pow it was called the sap trap this was also a johnson smith product now here is if i believe this is my original that i got no actually you know what uh, this is a uh, what oh my gosh i can't read yeah it might be the original this is the the submarine that would come in captain crunch that you know you put baking soda in it goes down it comes up goes down i had like two or three originals of these i think this is an original because the drawer I got it in is is a it's a box of old jokes and stuff. And now, when this is the one I got sent, which it kind of it's not the same with the, as uh, the one Kirk Demaris has in the book Mail Order Mysteries, but this is the uh, the chest expander, you know that you would pull. I got to be careful because I don't want to break it. But this is the one that I got. I believe I ordered mine through an ad that might not have been it could have been Johnson Smith or the company that Gandalf Pro, I think it was Gandalf Products I'm not too sure where I got this one but I wanted the one that, that Kirk put in the book this is somebody in, in the book actually that's not my photo but they have the one that you know that's actually pictured in the thing this is the one I got, but I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same rubber thing. The only the, the, the difference is in, in the corners, man, what a mess I got here now. But anyway, here we go. We're going now to the really good classic ones. This, it's gotta be the best joke ever played. The original talking toilet. Okay. You see the box here? I still have about I, either four or six left original. This item one time, when my wife, my, my oldest daughter, she's 34 now. So she was about two years old, right? So I put it on the toilet. And this one you can put behind the toilet so they don't see it. And when they, they sit on the toilet, it ignites this little spot. Not a sponge, but like a little, 
air bubble thing and it would make it go off and that's like a little record player inside this is the same company that made um the laughing bag uh, i think i'm almost sure this is a pointer product to be honest with you yeah pointer products this pointer products are the same company that made the adams family thing bank in the 1960s they make the black box bank that's the little black box that the hand comes out and takes the coin they also made about 20 variations of that box. There's the Dracula box. I have them all. Actually, I'm going to one day, I have a box that's all with about 25 different versions of that. Um, from the Dracula, the IRS man, the anti-bank that throws a coin back at you, the monster in the box sold by the captain company in every page. But it's, it's the same little black box. And in fact, there's a thing that they sell in um, on Amazon all the time called the... Uh, useless machine or the totally useless which is a little square box that when you turn it on uh, a finger comes out and turns itself off same thing pointed products originated that whole idea this is an original pointed product now this when they do sell they tend to go for a couple of hundred dollars i don't know why it's it's bizarre but here is in the original box and i have four or five of them so you know they're pretty i have some boxes i have one that's really like mint which I, I uh, have that somewhere else. But anyway, that's one of the... Now here is, before Game Boy, of course, in the early 80s and stuff, <laughs> Universal Monster. This was like a, a Game Boy thing, the electronic game. I have the four cartridges. Uh, don't know where they are. I just said, but I, 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 have, I bought that for my oldest daughter and she used to... Now here, here's a super old item. And if, I have it here because the condition is... Is, is hard and I don't want it to but here we because th this is like one of those that is in mint condition this is the cigarette it's it's like um it's supposed to be a cigarette pack but when you touch it it shocks you um honestly you see how it is on the side it's if you take it out which I don't want to really push it out because you know what it's it's in here it's it's brand new almost but you see this is something that will probably sell for quite a lot of money but this is the already look at the artwork and that how nice it was done right and it was made by again the franco-american novelty company they um bob the guy i i was uh, that was actually when i had my magic shop the very first company that gave me my account like net 30 that gave me credit was franco-american novelties and they were also the ones that one time i ordered x-ray glasses and they stuck in those that i gave todd one of them by accident uh, the aqua specs that I gave him the last one, I think. I I had two or three of them. I I, I mean, I, I, had, I know I had two for, for certain. I just don't remember what I did with the last two. I gave Todd, might be the last one I gave him. I don't know. But you know what? He deserved it. I, I, Todd is, is number one, man. So his friendship is worth my last product. Now, here I have uh, Jetsons. You guys remember, this is a carded Jetsons... Um, one of those pistols that, that you know spark they have the little they have like one of those things from the lighters inside and they spark it's it's in mint condition as you can see um, that's another problem now here is uh, something i used to sell a lot of my now this is from the 80s as well this is uh done by fun world fun world but anyway a bottle of blood you see that bottle of blood i used to sell this in my store i just found that here i have uh you guys got to remember this the famous Chinese is a bag of them. I have like a couple. Uh, finger trap. They used to stick it, and you your finger would get you know the Chinese finger trap. This they used to be called Chinese handcuffs when I was a kid, and oh my gosh, I thought it was so cool. Here here's you know a bag of them. Probably have like two or three more bags of this. I think there's like a hundred in here, if you see them, you know. But anyway, I'm not gonna count them for you. Remember what I said. When people order in the mail, there were two versions. In in the mail, you wouldn't get a carded thing. You would get like the x-ray glasses. It wouldn't come in a card. They would come with the instructions and a rubber band around it or in a plastic bag. But you would never get carded. When I used to send out the hot pepper gum, the HP for hot pepper, this is what they came in. These are really early 1980s. This is probably 82, 83. Because I bought this when I was thinking of the idea of mail order. The packs are here, but imagine eating one of these, man. They're probably, I mean, I still have 
about five packs of each. The red mouth gum, the garlic gum, the farting candy, which was the top seller. The hot pepper gum was famous in comic books. It did not work that great. In fact, 90% of the time when you ordered it, they came stale. I don't know why. But this is the company that made it. It, uh, it says Carolina's supposed to try to trick you. But, I mean, come on. You can tell those gums don't look like wriggly, sugarless gum like they, they portrayed it. But, anyway, I just wanted to show you how when people order, they would get that version. Okay, now, I showed you one old... See, I'm saying the, the more older products I'm showing. Now, here... Oh, my gosh. Who doesn't remember? This is a Johnson Smith too. The Vincent Living Skull. This sucker is fantastic. I love this little guy. Um, I have uh, three of them. This one is my box that I put on display out there because it's kind of like you can see the age has warped it a little bit. Um, it was made in 1989. See the, the year right there? Express yourself. But what was so fantastic about this that really attracted me, that there, there was uh, in the ad... Uh, I think the ad was either Johnson Smith. I, I'm almost sure it was Johnson Smith or Spencer's. This is Spencer's in the mall, but be, before it used to be a mail order store. And I think one of the ads said, this was so scary that it will give, give Dracula the creeps. That sold me, that little phrase that will give Dracula the creeps. And in fact, I've used it in some of my ads. Uh, but anyway, this is Vincent the Living Skull. When you pass in front of it, it says, uh, ba -bum. Perfect for practical jokes. This guy will be the life of the party. There's another famous word used in mail order. The life of the party. Anytime the light level changes in front of Vincent. Up to 15 feet away. His blood red eyes start pulsing. And he emits a chilling eerie laugh. And it was kind of funny though. Because this particular thing laughs like. Hoo, 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 hoo. It's got a really old fashioned evil laugh. Like I said. I love Vincent my little guy here. I have four of them. I have one of them in really, really top shape. I, I have that one like in, in a special box. Now, along with me collecting and ordering mail order stuff, uh, here is a bag of, uh, you see, let me see if, if you can see all the stuff. Here's uh, glowing hands, uh, stuff that you would get in gumball machines. Here is uh, the shrunken, uh, what is it, the eye? Bloody eye. I guess that's, a, yeah, oh, look at this, see? That's what it is, see the bloody eye? Sold in, in a lot of mail order things. Wait, 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 I don't know if you could see it. You see it there? I don't want to take it out of the, the bag here because my hands now have become a little dirty. And and this are really, you know, look at this, the Spider-Man action figure there, see? These are all things that either came as packaged with other products in the mail, like the six-foot Frankenstein. Um, and one thing I wanted to say about the six-foot Frankenstein, let me just mention this real quick. The color version of the six-foot Frankenstein that was made by the Lowell Toll Company is all one piece. There is some guy on eBay selling one for like $1,800. It's not the original. It's a second version that came out of England in the early 70s. Now, here's how you can tell the difference. If you put both Frankensteins side by side, okay? You will see one thing. They, the one has a bigger head than the other. They have the same, you know, hand forward like that with the chain. But the Frankenstein that was from England, the cheaper version of it, which in reality, when you have the original, I have, I think I have two of those. Um, they're horrible. The colors is, is, is why, like the color kind of bleeds along the line. And the thing that's bad about it is that they didn't have a machine that would print six feet. So between the knee and the ankle, they joined the second piece. So if you look very closely, and that one they're selling on eBay right now, and you look, there's like a, a darker line that goes through the back of the post. That's actually because they glue the top and the bottom of the poster together. And then the top of it has a cardboard with a string, and the bottom one has a weighted cardboard, just like those Chinese... Uh, calendars you get when you go to a Chinese restaurant that they give you, you know, no way in the world is that worth even close to $200, let alone $1,800. It's insane. Uh, but anyway, people will ask and the promise, will they ever sell it? I don't know. Here's one bag of these. Now, the other one I have is a bag, the same thing, but here we have skeletons. 
Um, little creatures, I guess, fit in your thumb. Spider rings. These are also from, from the early, late 60s, early 70s, I guess. I bought this in New York City. Um, there was a magic shop going out of business that had been there for years. I'm not sure if it was Gordon's or something, but they were selling and I, I bought this back back then. Um, my intent of buying that is because I always like sometimes making displays and I've always liked like skeletons in an island, kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean model kits that they used to sell in the 70s, uh, that they had the sap action. Well, I always, so I, I kind of wanted those skeletons to, you know, make my own little dioramas. But anyway, um, as we're getting to the end now, I'm going to show another product. Now, when you used to go to New York City back in 1970, whatever, uh, there were always these vendors in the street. And one of the things vendors would always sell were they, one that they had a, a balloon that looked like a torpedo and it was huge and it had different colors, right? And it had like round balls as it went up. But they would have one that was like 10 feet long, right? And then you thought that for a dollar, the ones they had in their hand were like the one they used to, no, they, the, the one never grew past three feet, you know? But <laughs> I always fell for that thing. I was, and then this is a, this is one of my favorite. There was a, this guy, some guy, they were selling. Now this snake is, I probably bought it when I was like eight years old. Um, it's still actually in, in, a, in pretty good condition. Let me see if I can uh, see where you see. Well, uh, it has twisted a little bit out of shape here, you know. But you see how it went like this? So now some guy was selling them like this. So I bought this and I have one of my cousins that grew up with me. Um, her name is Arlene. If she's listening to this, you know, here it is again, Arlene. <laughs> I went like that to her and she had a fever for like two days. How scared she got. <laughs> she was like four or five at the time. So that's why I'm just joking. I thought I'd bring it up. But anyway, this has been in my possession. I don't know, 40 years, 45 years, more and more because I'm 50, 56. So this was when I was about five or six or seven that I bought this. See, anyway, I, I have it and I've maintained it in, in awesome condition. Uh, one of the things I was going to tell a lot of people, because I was talking today to Todd, and he gave me an idea. He said that anytime you put collectibles away, uh, to make sure you, you use plastic cases. And I, I want to say two things about that. Plastics work okay, but I had a, a situation that one time I put plastic, and, and it collapsed, and it destroyed a lot of my robots that were in the bottom box. They, for some reason, can't stand the weight over time, so bins that are plastic and also if you have say for example one of my closets in my house i stored away a, a poster that was almost 600 bucks a french version of um of a poster and i don't remember which poster it was it happened a couple of years ago but you know when people took showers and stuff they would open the the hallway door and you know how the humidity will go in it was in plastic plastic you know you would think it's going to protect it no it got the condensation went into the plastic and it was sealed so i almost lost the poster thank god you know i was able to you know take care of it but when i had the fire i found out that the thing that survived the best the fire was things i kept in filing cabinets all this stuff was in filing cabinets i had a cedar wood chest now the cedar wood chest was I don't know, like five feet, one of those old-fashioned chests that was real. And I thought it would be great. Everything in there, man. That thing, when the water hit it, it warped like this, man. It was horrible. It fell all apart. So I told Todd the same thing. What I recommend, if people have very expensive collectibles, get these styrofoam thick, the thick ones, the you know, thick ones that they sell for beer, for food, whatever. But get the thick ones. Don't get the, the garbage ones. They sell for, like, picnics and stuff. Sometimes there's Omaha steaks when people order through the mail Omaha steaks. If you put things in those, in this, the more expensive, which is what I do. See, like this one here. In here, I keep my little snake, you know. <laughs> and no moisture goes in. This thing, water will never damage it. It's got a perfect seal. And it's styrofoam. This is probably the best way to keep your very expensive collectibles. Um, another story I said, uh, I was talking about the seven foot monster ghost, which is the old time favorite I ever had. And back in the day, I was trying to remake my first version of that because I always said to myself, I'm going to sell that item. 
And back in 1989, when I had joined forces with Lou Weiss with the original Fun Factory, that I ran my full page ad in, in the comics, I was trying to make the ghost, but I didn't want to make because I had no idea how to really make it. And I contacted this company at the time. Uh, the company was Sun Hill Industries. And I think they're still in business today, but they started offering the leaf and lawn bags uh, that you would see in lawns filled with, you know, the leaves and stuff. And it had pictures of Halloween items. So since they were a plastic company, I contacted them. And the lady, after I faxed her, remember, this is the time before email, so I couldn't send her an email. I faxed her a couple of the ads for the seven foot ghost. And you know what she did? She wanted me to send her a sample. I said no, that I would need to speak with her in person. So the following year, lo and behold, what a coincidence, huh? The seven foot ghost with flashing eyes. Kind of looks like the seven foot monster ghost with you control, huh? With the glow in the dark eyes. The only thing that their their version really sucked. And they sold this for nine bucks, man. See, the, the box is a little crushed, of course, because of age. But this this is what they did. In here, the, I've never I haven't opened this bag in ages. I'm just kind of curious because I have uh, some paper here. What the heck? Is, oh, look what this is. This is a copy of the Great Leon. Now this is a heck of a book. I've sold hundreds of this book. The Great Leon Leon Miniature Haunted House. It's a book that teaches you how to build the the the, the magic trick, the product, and and how to perform it. This is really a nice book. People love submarines. And one of the greatest movies, I, I, not the greatest movie I've seen, but the ad and the, the, the stuff for the movie was phenomenal. The artwork is great. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. This was a cheesy B, B movie, and it's called The Atomic Submarine. Now, I think that this is the, the movie that might have inspired this product, maybe. Uh, or this is why actually I had this product because I want to talk talk about this particular thing. Now, they also might have inspired this seven foot submarine. But here's the thing: this is an original card, like lobby card. Um, I think I paid a little bit over a hundred dollars for it when I bought it. But you, you see, look at the look at the artwork in that with the big one eye monster. But if you notice, there's a lot of ads out there that when you look at mail order that kind of imitate this guy here. Which I wouldn't be surprised that this comes from Lost in Space because if you look at one of I think there's a creature that has one eye like that looks similar. But anyway, this is earlier 1940. So that means John, um, Lost in Space probably copied this thing here. But here's this. And um, I also wanted to show another thing that I had here uh, based on that. Um, this is... Now, I want to touch this because my hand's now touching all that. In fact, I had a, a paper that was semi-wet here because I don't want to, you know... The dirt, I mean, because even though you keep it in boxes, believe it or not, it's incredible how dust can just seep into anything, any place. But anyway, here it is, it looks like it's, uh, I don't know, some type of advertising for the submarine. See, it's all original. And this photo here, I, I, I bought this because I wanted to show, this is a photo for something with the submarine. It's the atomic submarine. But if you look at it, you know what's so funny? This looks like a flying saucer right now. This is an original photograph, by the way. And talking about original photographs, during all my searches, I'm going to show it next week, but I found an original Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein photograph. Not a, du a duplicate, an original photograph from 1940 when they did the film. And it shows Bela Lugosi and it shows... Um, uh, Glenn Strange as the Frankenstein going down the stairs the one is looking at each other that's got to be worth over a thousand bucks you know I'm not going to even sell that but I, I want to show the, the actual photograph now I bought this because I think there's some UFO sightings that show something like this which I, I started thinking I was wondering if they took this photograph from the film now what makes this film funny for me is now I'm, I'm being careful with this I don't want to really touch this stuff because this I don't want to, you know, like I said, my hands, and this is original stuff here. I'm not, this is nothing duplicate or anything. This is original stuff. And I, I paid for everything you see here over $100. Um, I got it at a trade show, but trade show or, or I sent, yeah, I think it was a trade show. It wasn't eBay. But what I want to show that's funny is if you watch this film, now you can get this film, I think, in a, uh, 
eBay once in a while sells it, or you can get it on Amazon, like, you know, copies and stuff of it on DVD. But when you see the sub, you actually see a sub like this, and you can tell in the background it's got a little stick, you know. <laughs> Talking about old-fashioned uh, movie SF, SF effects, or this is what happens also when you do the video at 3 o'clock in the morning, like I'm doing it every time now. Um, I forget words. A little bit of Mike Johnson Smith catalog collection. Here is the laser gun plants, of course. Judo, the judo booklet. See the condition? Brand new almost. Here is one Johnson Smith catalog, a second Johnson Smith catalog from the 70s. Um, there's actually in the front here. Because a lot of people, see, that's, that's one Johnson Smith, two Johnson Smith. This one here in the back is, this this, this is one of the greatest ones of all, actually, but see, third Johnson Smith. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show something in this one here in particular. If you go, this is the only one that you can tell that the originators of the seven-foot Frankenstein and Boney the Skeleton um, was Johnson Smith. Uh this is going to make me look bad, but it's. Uh, I'm going to show you the actual ad that you see Honor House ran for years. Oh my gosh. Don't you hate it when that happens? Oh, see, see here, here. Oh, yeah. Here is the, um, the the ghost house that I told you that I have quite a few of them. Here is the original Bony the Skeleton and Frankenstein. See, in a Johnson Smith catalog. Now, this catalog is probably one of the best copies. From that era with the best products in it the one that has this cover you see the the ghost there um this particular one i'll, I'll tell you right now that it sells for a lot when it comes but this is my favorite copy i have like two or three you see the ghost there see see how they they, they have it there but anyway this one here the 60th year so fun whatever is probably in my opinion the best because when you look through it, it, it it's got everything you can think. Now, here is another Johnson Smith catalog. You see, it says things you never knew. It says the original thing. Here is a another older, late 60s Johnson Smith catalog. This one is the Secrets of 100. This is um, Marshall Gold. This is one of the original TV magic tricks. Here is another Johnson Smith catalog. Another Johnson Smith catalog from the 70s. Another Johnson Smith catalog from the 70s. This one here is a catalog. Uh, LB. LB was another famous uh, company that you see in comic books. LB out of Texas. This is an LB catalog. Now, I just grabbed this because this was here. I don't want to really look because I have hundreds of Johnson Smith catalogs. Here is a Rumpelstiltskin book and record. See? Here is a more modern day. This is probably, I don't know, the 80s or 90s. Johnson Smith catalog. See? It's it's bigger. It says the original was, uh, as you can see here, you know, almost half the size. Um, in here in the back is, is another one. See, Johnson Smith, as it started to, see? This is a... Uh, I don't know. As it started to turn into the 80s and 90s into last year, what they were selling turned out to be more like Spencer's. You know, a lot of adult products and, you know, weird products and stuff. But, you know, there was not the same Johnson Smith at the 70s. Um, but you know what, Calf? I just wanted to show you the, the variations of catalogs. Next week, I'll bring out like another 50 or 60 of them so you could see, including a couple of the ones I have from the 1920s and 30s. I have about, I think, 10 of those uh, in really good condition. I have one from 1929, which is the year Johnson Smith was the largest. Having said that, till next time and the next unboxing. But before I leave, I must say one important thing. Guys, if you want toy reviews, you got to see Laura Legends. Laura Legends in her videos offers the best toy review in the country. I mean, she's phenomenal. She's a girl at a very young age that has us in heart because what I'm saying that she basically is she 
you know, goes over stuff that we grew up with. But she does such a great job doing it. I think you'll love her channel. Second, go buy the seven foot Frankenstein from David at Acme House Novelties. Again, I've said it many times. I, I started that with David. You can find that if you search eBay, you just look up seven foot Frankenstein or go to my site and then scroll down past. There's a part there where I'm demonstrating the monster. Click on the link. It's going to take you directly to his eBay page. Third, guys, I started a podcast. It's already on its fourth week. And we have wonderful shows coming up. The show that's coming on next Wednesday is phenomenal. We had one that we spoke of UFOs. We spoke. It, it's it's going to be a variation of fun stuff. And I'm going to have guests, special guests each and every week. This coming week is you need to. The one that's coming this coming Wednesday is phenomenal. But for the next Wednesday, we're going to have the famous Johnson Smith, Craig Tarbeck. He's the guy that coined the phrase, the phrase, things you never knew existed. You can Google it. You can find that information. He's the guy who coined that phrase. And he's also the one, one of the originals that made my seven foot ghost. <laughs> um, having said that, guys, good night.